Welcome fans to a very special edition of The Spread. I am your host, Jim Sella. I am here with Norwin goalkeeper, Sam Wexel. We're going to talk a little bit about her experiences as a youth soccer player in Western PA. How are you doing today, Sam? I'm good. I'm glad to be on with you. Thanks. Hey, thanks for sitting down and taking time with us. Appreciate yeah, it. No I know you. For having me. I know you were busy today with your game. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure you let your dad know. Thanks for helping get all this set up too. I appreciate it. I know I've been kind of bothering him a little bit over the last few weeks. <laughs> I will. So before we get into the questions, I just want to give the fans a little bit of background information on you. Like I said, Sam, you are the goalkeeper for the Norwin High School girls soccer team. Norwin has a 53-5-2 record with Sam and Nett. You were named to the all Whippeal team and the first team Big 56 All-Section last year. You helped lead Norwin to consecutive Whippeal Class 4A championships. You are also a two-time U.S. Cup National Champion for the Pittsburgh Riverhounds Developmental Academy team. And you have chosen Ohio University as your college to go play soccer for the Bobcats. Am I correct on all these things? Yep. All of those are correct. You have accomplished more in, what, 17 years than I have in 34 years. So congratulations <laughs> to you on that. <laughs> Thank you. So I just have a few questions for you, Sam. Uh, we talked a little bit before this interview. You said you played softball, volleyball, and basketball growing up, but you decided to just play soccer once you got to high school. What made you choose mm -hmm. soccer over these other sports? Um... I, well, I started with basketball, and then, like, I just kind of added on, and I actually started soccer, like, kind of late. Like, most of my friends started at, like, age four or five, and I started around eight, but I don't know. I just always really loved soccer, and um, when I was younger, um, most of my teammates were too scared to play goalie because they didn't want to get kicked or anything, but I didn't really mind, so I was always kind of put in goal, and then I started to really like it, and then once I got to high school, um, I tried to play high school basketball freshman year, but it was too hard with all the traveling with soccer and missing. So I just kind of made the decision to focus on soccer. I don't know how you do it because I I've never played soccer for like a team, but I've tried a little bit and I'm just not coordinated. I will trip and fall over the <laughs> ball every time. I need to be able to use my hands. I can play sports that you can uh -huh. use your hands. But if, if that's no yeah, good, exactly. then that's I... That's why I like goalie. <laughs> yeah, there you go. See, I, I could probably play goalie. I might not be that great at it, but I could definitely be better than any of the other positions. <laughs> so, Sam, just tell us a little bit about the recruiting process. We know you committed to Ohio University, but were there other teams trying to recruit you, and how early did that start? Um, I guess the first thing I did looking at colleges was in eighth grade. Um, I just did, like, a few camps. So that's pretty much how it starts. Um, you kind of look at colleges you like and try to go to what are called ID camps. So you just sign up, and then it kind of gives coaches, like, a chance to look at you. Obviously, they're not just going to want to see you play once and then decide that they want you. Um, after that, you're going to start sending coaches your schedules for games and tournaments so that they come out and watch you. And then if they're interested in you, they're going to want to see you play a few more times and then if they really like you, they will have you on campus for a visit. And then that's when you start, like, getting seriously into, like, whether they're going to offer and, like, narrowing it down at that point. And what other schools were you seriously considering other than Ohio? Um, my most serious schools I was looking at were probably um, St. Joe's, Davidson, Robert Morris and Northwestern, and then Akron kind of came into it at the end. I would say those ones were the ones, like, at the end of my process that I was kind of looking at um, in a mix with Ohio U, but then at the end I just decided on Ohio, and I'm very glad that I did. Now, when we spoke earlier, you said you chose Ohio because it gave you the best combination of athletics and education, and you knew you would be happy there. How did you know you would be happy there, and what was the biggest factor in that decision? Um, I think the biggest thing for me was just when I went on campus for my visit, um, I just felt so good. Like, I love the campus. It's a beautiful campus. And I spent a good amount of time with the team that's already there right now. And, like, we ate lunch together. We walked around campus. And they were very welcoming. And I just felt the most comfortable there out of everywhere. 
And then when I did a camp there, they just have really good facilities. And I just felt really good, like, playing soccer there. And I could also see myself as, like, going to school there. Because when you're looking at schools, people always say, oh, you should look at it. Like, what if you get injured, you can't play soccer, and then you're just stuck at this school? And, like, I knew that I loved every aspect of it. And it seemed like a perfect fit for me. Now, just because of the sheer numbers uh, in soccer, as a goalkeeper, you know, there's only one starter per team. So, obviously, those spots fill up a little quicker on these college teams. Did that create an issue for you during your search for the right school? Um, I'm not sure if I would say it was an issue because, uh, although, like, you're right that it does fill up quickly and it's something where I'd be like, oh, I'm interested in this school, but they already have a goalie in this class and you really don't need more than one per class usually. Um, but also with goalie being a specialized position, there were a lot of instances where big schools would, like something would happen and then they'd be desperate for a goalie. So like since it's like a specialized position where you wouldn't just move a field player back to play goalie, there were some times where schools would contact me saying like, um, we just had an issue and we really need a goalie in your class. So it kind of helped in that regard. But it's definitely it's definitely harder when, you know, there's only one starting goalie per team. Have you decided on your major yet? I know you were considering either education or sports management. Yeah, um, I kind of, going into it, I was pretty sure I wanted education, just like in general, no matter where I went. That was something I was really interested in because then I would have an option to coach and I would have an option to go into special ed. And, like, there were all these different options with education but then, like, when I committed to Ohio, I started looking into how they have a pretty good sports management program, and that really interests me. So I'm not exactly decided yet, but I think those are the two things I'm, I've narrowed it down to. Are you leaning towards one over the other yet? Um, I think I've been leaning towards education for a while, just because I feel like the versatility of, of it and all the options it gives me. But, like, since I did choose Ohio, um, I want to use like what they have to my advantage. So just seeing like all the specialized programs that they offer, it, it's definitely like an interesting thing, sports management. So uh, it's still up in the air for me, but I would say I'm leaning towards education. I'd have to agree about uh, sports management being interesting. I was dating a girl in college and she got a sports management degree online. But honestly, I think I should have got the degree because I did all the online work for her and she just did nothing. <laughs> <laughs> So now I said earlier, you are a two-time U.S. Cup national champion for the Pittsburgh Riverhounds Developmental Academy team. Now, I knew about the Riverhounds. I knew they existed, but I was unaware that they had a developmental team. This is, what, 17 and under, correct? Uh, yeah. Can you just tell us a little bit about that and your experiences there? So the Riverhounds have, like, a like semi-pro team, a pro team in Pittsburgh, and underneath that, they have the academy. So it's boys and girls, all different ages. And so, like, my team, like, we're – actually, I believe we're classified as under 18, even though I'm only 17. So it's pretty much, like, everyone in, like, my class of school, so, like, junior. And then they have, like, 16, 17. So it's all different age groups. And pretty much they're just bringing us in and, like, from a very young age, teaching us how to play soccer, how to be professional. I would say that's the biggest aspect of the academy because since they have a pro team, we always see like them at practice. Some of them come and coach us, and then obviously we go to their games and support them. So the Riverhounds has definitely been a huge, huge part of my success. Um, I've always had really great coaches there. And aside from soccer, they just taught me all the ways I should act on and off the field. What do you think has been the best part of your time playing at Norwin? Um, I would have to say this past season was, was my favorite. I mean, obviously winning um, with the Ulster the first time was great because it was new and it was like the first time. But I felt a lot closer to the team this past season in my, in my junior year. And then um, like it was, it was just a great feeling to like, prove everyone wrong that said like we couldn't do it again and that we lost too many seniors and I would say the highlight of the season for me was the Whitfield Championship game. Um, I just thought I played well and like I walked off the field like feeling really happy about not only the result but my performance and my team's performance. So, so far that, that was definitely the best moment for me. 
Now, I actually grew up right in that Norwin area. I went to Yawk High School. Do you guys ever get to play Yawk and beat them into the ground? Because they pretty much lose at every sport. <laughs> no, we haven't played Yawk yet. I have I have one girl that goes to Yawk that's on my Riverhounds team, but we've never played them in high school soccer. They are, they are not very good at many things. Every once in a while, we get <laughs> one good player on a team, and we can do something, but we generally don't have a good team. In it. We had a good golf team, I think, one year. Uh-huh. <laughs> so the last question I got for you, Sam, soccer is the most popular sport in the world, but it's not the most popular sport in America. What do you think makes the game so appealing to the rest of the world, and why do you think that America hasn't caught up yet? Um, I think there's a lot of aspects of soccer that make it popular all around the world. I think part of that is the fact that like it's really easy to just organize like a pickup game you like play with your friends and it's not something that really costs a lot of money i mean obviously when you get into like traveling soccer you're going to be spending a lot of money on that but all you really need to play are cleats shin guards and a ball and i know like with my friends it's so easy to just say like Let, let's go play pickup soccer like it's an easy thing to just get out and do so i think like more and more like kids are becoming interested in it but uh as of why i thought that popular in America. I think it's I think it's going to catch on. I think it's starting to obviously the success of our um, professional women's team has has done great things for making soccer more popular in this country, but um, I I think it'll catch on. I think Americans just need to be a little more patient. They want everything all at once, you know, that instant satisfaction, mm -hmm. instant gratification. Soccer is a sport kind of like hockey where you have to watch it and appreciate it for what it really is and appreciate the game. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that as well. And part of that is people watching say, oh, there's only like one goal gets scored a game. Like it's so boring except for five seconds when they score. But I think that part makes it so much more exciting because you know that if you if you give up a goal or if your team scores a goal, like it could decide the whole game. Like every moment, every moment is so important because all it takes is one goal for a game. Whereas like basketball or football or something like that, where it's like constant scoring in soccer, if you have one goal, it could decide everything. No, I lied. I have one more question for you. Any chance you would decide to switch sports and go play for the Penguins and help them win some Stanley Cups? Can you play goalie in hockey? <laughs> I don't think so. Since I play goalie, uh, I always get asked to play goalie when, when we play hockey in gym class, and it is it is so hard. I'm I'm not very good at it. The only thing is that I can do like splits. Like I'm a little I'm kind of flexible, so that helps. But I I'm not very good at hockey. I couldn't see that happening. <laughs> Well, you're good at soccer, so that's all that really matters, right? <laughs> exactly. Well, Sam, again, I want to say thank you for taking the time to sit down and talk with us. We appreciate it. All our fans appreciate it. Uh, congratulations on everything you've accomplished so far and everything that I know you will accomplish. Like I said earlier, you've done more in your 17 years than I've done in my 34 years. So good luck to you and everything you do in the future, and just thanks for coming. Thank you. You have a good day. You too.